Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands, and this, of course, of course, is learn how to edit stuff. Today we're gonna to be talking about anime flash effects. I'm talking lightning, I'm talking energy, I'm talking fire, smoke, water, all of it. Now, all of these elements, let's roll the clip. Are available to you right now on videohive.net. Now, those of you that have been subscribers for a while know that I, Nadi and Sands, on this channel, Learn How to Edit Stuff, have a nice little partnership with Invato slash videohive.net. Well, what is videohive.net? It is a place where you, a multimedia junkie, can go and download templates and graphics and effects and music and all sorts of different amazing elements for your videos for a very, very cheap price. And it's good quality. Now, let me preemptively say I am gonna show you guys how to make some of these energy effects yourself in After Effects. We will be doing a tutorial if you don't want to spend the money to buy the packs, but I recommend spending the money on the packs for a couple of reasons. Number one, it does benefit me in a very small way, but it mostly benefits you guys because you're getting a lot of amazing video effect flash anime elements for a very low price. So it mostly benefits you, but if you like this channel and if you like everything that I've taught you up until this point, it does support me in a very small way. So it is meaningful to me and the partnership with Envato, but mostly I'm doing this for you guys. And number two, time is money. Your your time actually has value associated to it. So if you're spending a tremendous amount of time on something, you're actually losing money if you value time for money. Time is money. You've heard that many times, not just from me in life, because it's said for a reason. Just to give you an example, one of the packs we're gonna be working with today on the website says it took 640 hours to create all 140 elements in the pack. If you break that down to time per hour, that's the equivalent of five cents an hour. Five cents. In the video description below, you will find two links. One is to a 140 pack and the other one is to a 240 pack. I personally recommend the 140 pack because it's cleaner, the animations are nicer, it comes with a lot of templates outside of just the flash effect elements, and it's actually a very valuable learning tool for you guys out there. When I was first getting started in After Effects, I used to buy packs on Video Hive all the time and just spend hours and hours and hours going through each layer and seeing what movements were happening with all the layers and breaking down all of these effect packs so I could better understand After Effects. But luckily, you guys have me to kind of show you the way, but I do recommend if you do buy this stuff to actually go through and look through everything because it is very valuable information. Again, links are in the video description below if you guys would like to purchase them. It mostly benefits you, but it does benefit me in a very small way, and I would be appreciative of it because any little bit helps. Because I just got married, and marriage isn't cheap. But enough preamble, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own energy anime flash effect things inside of Adobe After Effects right now. So open up Adobe After Effects right now, because we're getting started right now. All right, boys and girls, After Effects is open, and right now I am in the 140 Flash Effects Elements After Effects project that comes with the pack if you choose to download it from Video Hive. I will be going through all of this stuff with you at the end of the lesson just to show you what's all included in this pack, but for right now, we're making them ourselves. Let's get started. So I'm gonna come up here to Composition, New Composition, and my composition settings are 1920 by 1080 at 23976 at 10 seconds, and we're gonna click OK, and it will open up a blank composition just just like this. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is come right up here to layer, new, shape layer. And we're gonna drop a new shape layer down on our timeline down here. And then you're gonna tool down this little arrow next to the shape layer. And we're gonna start adding some contents here with this little add button right next to contents. So we're gonna click on that and we're going to add a path and that will turn your cursor into the pointer pen ink thing. I don't, uh, fountain pen, that's what it's called. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a nice little lightning bolt shape just like so very energetic. Look at how beautiful that is. So that's all we're gonna do for there. Then we're gonna come down to add and we're going to add a stroke to this and it will add a stroke to our line. We're gonna to tool down the stroke panel and we're going to increase the stroke width from two to maybe 15 so we can see what we're doing here. And we're gonna switch it from butt cap to round cap so it rounds out the edges of our line. Step three, we're gonna add another thing. We're gonna add a trim paths to this shape layer, which is basically gonna allow us to animate this line from start to finish, and it's gonna start with your first point and end with your last point. But if you ever wanted to do it in reverse order, or if you're not sure which point to select, you can right click on any one of your points. You can go to mask and shape path and set first vertex, and that will tell After Effects that this is the point that you want to start from. 
Now down under trim paths, we have a start and an end point. And if I take this end point and I drag it all the way back to zero, you'll see that it starts animating from the back. And if I was to animate this from zero, it will start from our first vertex and animate all the way down. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start from zero on our end and we're gonna set a keyframe right at the very beginning of our composition. And we're gonna go over one, two, three, four, five keyframes. We're gonna set end to 75. And then we're also gonna set a keyframe for our start point. And I'm gonna go over one, two, three keyframes. And I'm gonna turn our end up to 100. And then I'm gonna go over one, two, three more keyframes and set our start to 100 as well. So now if I zoom in here, I'm gonna set the end of my composition at one second because you don't want these to be very long. You want them to be very snappy and flashy. So if I played this, it now animates the line and then it goes to nothing. And let's just check our ending keyframe here. It is actually set to 99. So let's set that to 100. So now it actually finishes the animation. So this is the most basic function of this. And now we're gonna start doing things to this to make it look a little bit more electricity, electricity -y? Electricity, electrified. Ele We're gonna make it look more electrified. Check this out. Under our effects and presets, I'm gonna type in turbulent and we're gonna drop a turbulent displace right on this layer. And now look at our layer, it's gonna get all wonky. This is where we're gonna to start to get our electricity effects rocking real nice. So under our effect controls, under turbulent displace, I'm gonna switch this from turbulent to twist. And I'm gonna start messing around with the amount and size. Now, if I start bringing size down, you'll see that it starts to do really weird things to the line and it starts to get a little bit more jagged and electrified. And if I turn the amount up or down, you can see it kind of like gets wonkier as you get farther away from zero. So this is just personal preference at this point. So we're just gonna get something that I think looks pretty good. So maybe uh, somewhere along the lines of here, it looks pretty good. We can turn the complexity up, which will do a lot of really weird things and it will get really crazy the higher up you go. But for the complexity, I think we're gonna leave it right about two. And that's looking pretty good. So now if I were just to play this, now you see that my line is very static and it is very wobbly at the same time. So the only parameter in turbulent displace that we're going to animate for this effect is the evolution. So right at the very beginning of our composition, I'm gonna set my evolution keyframe here. And then I'm gonna to go to the very end where the animation finishes. And I'm going to crank this up a lot. Now, as you can see, it works on a circle. So if I go from zero, all the way up to 360, it will start over again, but then it will put a little one here, which is one full rotation. So I'm gonna keep rotating this until we get to maybe four rotations. And what that's gonna do is it's actually going to make the line kind of jitter. Like if I just move it while you see the line, it just makes it kind of do this jitter. So I'm animating the evolution over time so that while this animates, it actually gives it some sort of life and energy because the line itself is actually moving pretty rapidly. That's looking pretty good so far. So now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is come over here to anti-aliasing and you're going to switch this over to high just so it's a little bit better quality. And then from here, we're going to add a second turbulent displace to this layer. And we're gonna make sure that this is set to turbulent. I'm gonna adjust these settings just so it's not super wonky, maybe uh, five on the amount and the size uh, will do like 75. And now from here, again, I'm going to animate the evolution, set a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end, but this time we're only gonna go maybe two rotations on the evolution of that. So now it's giving us a little bit of turbulent displace and a little bit of twist displace on our animation here. So this is looking pretty good so far. Next, I'm gonna come up here to my effects and presets. I'm gonna type in roughen and I'm gonna drop a rough and edges underneath those two turbulent displaces. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see what we're doing. And I'm going to set this rough and edges from roughen to spiky. And then I'm gonna start messing with these parameters. So the border will actually increase or decrease the edge roughen. The more you go, the weirder it looks like plasma. So we want to kind of avoid that. So we're gonna do it just a little bit so the edges get a little bit rough. That looks pretty good right there, maybe about nine. The scale as well, if you go down closer to zero, it'll start to get really fuzzy and kind of crazy. So I think the scale on this, we're gonna leave it about 130 area. And for this one, we won't have to do any evolution at all. It'll just be the rough and edges. So now you can see that we're kind of getting somewhere with this little electricity lightning bolt thing. There you go, now we got a nice little lightning bolt. So the last thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna come up to our effects and presets. We're gonna type in glow and we're going to add a stylized glow to our lightning bolt. And in here under our color options, we're gonna turn this from color channels to alpha channel. And we're going to increase our glow radius 
just so we can see a nice little glow along the outside of our lightning bolt here. Maybe we'll decrease the threshold a little bit so it's a little more visible and we'll bump up the intensity a little bit as well. Leave all of this stuff as is and what we'll do is we'll turn the A and B midpoint all the way up to 100 and that's just gonna give us one color control on our glow which is gonna be color A and I'm gonna set this glow color to maybe like a yellow. And then down in here with our shape layer selected, we can come up here to the stroke color and we can set this to a yellow as well, or maybe an orange to give our lightning bolt a little bit more of a lightning feel. There you go, guys. We've just created a very basic lightning bolt shape with turbulent displace and roughened edges. And this will work with more than just your basic shape layers. We can add this to anything we want. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most basic and simplified way that you right now at home with After Effects can create your own electrical energy effects in its most simplistic form. Now, if you guys spend the 33 bucks and you download the After Effects pack from Video Hive, you will see how crazy and detailed these elements are. And the artists that made these things really took a lot of time to make sure that they look really, really good and that they're user friendly for you to just drop them in a project that you need them for right now and hit the ground running and not waste any time. So let's dive back into that After Effects project that you can download from Video Hive, supporting yourself and also supporting me. Thank you so much in advance if you decide to do it. And I will show you guys the complexity and how cool this project actually is. So if you guys are to download this project and you open up the After Effects project, you will have a bunch of preview compositions that just kind of show you all of the previews that are available to you in the elements. So if we double click on preview energy, and I play this timeline for you, all of these little things are the energy effects that you get inside of this pack. And it shows you all of them in little teeny tiny examples so you can kind of see what you're getting yourself into before you drop them in a project. Also, simultaneously, they give you gifts that you can look at, which I thought was really cool as well. So you can kind of just open these gifts and kind of preview what the energy files look like if you didn't want to do it in After Effects so you can kind of get an idea of what you're getting yourself into. So now on top of all of these energy effects, we also have flames, we have shape lines, smoke explosions, templates, and transitions. And if you guys check out the templates section of this, it's actually really, really cool. All of these are available to you. And if you double click on one of the pre comps, it will take you into the template and it will kind of show you exactly what you're getting yourself into with all of those energy effects that are available to you in the project. And all you would need to do is click on the text and you can change it to whatever you want. And now check that out guys, I've just made myself a really cool Not Ian Sands text and it took me literally two seconds. Simultaneously, you can also come up to these elements up here. You can tool down the folder and it tells you all of the different ones that are available to you. You can also come down here and say, go to energy and we'll drop in energy nine into a blank composition and it will kind of show you what you have available to you. And you can just drop this into any project that you need an energy effect for. Now, if you double click on this layer in your composition, and you click on this pre-comp right here and come up to our effect controls, it will give you a bunch of different options for you to change the color and the glow and everything really, really easily with the click of a button. So we're gonna change this color from blue, maybe we'll make it a red, and look, the whole composition updates, and then if I go back to my composition where I'm using this effect, it is now updated to red, and it makes it very, very easy for you to swap these out over and over again. So I can delete this energy out of here, I can come back over to the project, I can drop a new one onto my timeline, I can double click here, and now I can change the color at my heart's content. Maybe we'll do a green one for this, and then I can jump back into my composition, and now I have a green energy burst. And guys, again, you have hundreds of these, 140 to be exact, and they're all different and they're all super cool. So if you wanted, you can just combine a bunch of these together and just start dropping them on top of itself to make a really cool, spectacular, electrified storm of sorts. Now, I understand that some of you watching this video are probably like, what did I even just watch? I, I don't even understand what you just did there. And that's why I am suggesting that you guys actually go in and buy the pack because it does have multi-function, multi-use for you because you can actually go in and deconstruct everything that's happening inside of this After Effects project and use it as a kind of syllabus to kind of start creating more and more advanced versions of these. And all you have to do is pay the 33 bucks, which gives you access to the syllabus that you can and then tear apart and kind of break it down and see everything that's happening inside of it. Or if you're one of those people like me who doesn't want to spend the time making a bunch of custom ones and go through the trials and tribulations and aggravations of having to create this on your own, you can just pay the money, stick it in your project and be running right out of the gate. Time is money. Money is t money. Time. It's all 
relevant and it's all equal to each other. So if you care about time and you actually understand that time is money, this is saving you a tremendous amount of time, which is in turn saving you a tremendous amount of money. $33 is not that much money to spend to get 140 elements that you can customize and stick into your project right away. But if you are going to go out and make these on your own, I definitely recommend rewinding this video and watching the step-by-step -step on how to do that. But breaking it down in its most simplistic form is adding a shape layer, animating the stroke width, adding some turbulent displace and roughened edges onto that shape layer, adding some glow, and definitely making sure to keep your keyframes very, very short and condensed because these are flashy energy effects and you can't have flashy energy effects if the keyframes are spread out really long because then you'll have like bleh, energy effects and nobody wants that, they want flashy. We want flashy here. Obviously, I want you guys to go out and buy the effects packs because it does benefit me in a very small way, but it also benefits you by saving you time. But I didn't want to leave you empty handed. I figured I'd show you in the most basic form so this video wouldn't be like six hours long, how to create these yourself in After Effects right now. Well, that does it today for me, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something beneficial, whether it's the time and money equation or it's learning how to make your own energy flash effects inside of After Effects. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff, kind of. I was in Poland for the last couple weeks for work. We're not going to get into it right now. I try to upload as much as possible. You guys know that. I know that. We're all here for the same reason. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.